Okay, we're recording. This is the October 16th NOM Board of Directors meeting. Welcome, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we have a fun relational check-in to start off this meeting. It was going to be your favorite piece of spooky media, but then I thought, you know what? Not everyone likes spooky media. Some people don't like to be scared, which is fine. But... <laughs> my backup is what is your favorite candy now you may say you don't like candy but then you're wrong so <laughs> you could go dessert i guess i would accept that as an alternative uh but what what are we what are we feeling for for sweets what do people like i like cheese stuff uh sour and cheese. yeah um, sour patch kids jolly ranchers no and then no, sour patch kids are stupid. You, that's like <laughs> literally what you're talking about. Like it it, it no, checked it, off all of your criteria. No, yeah, it's the consistency is not really chewy. It's like you bite into it and it's like weird. It, uh, it yes, it's it. chewy. No, you're, 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 you like the Swedish fish consistency. Uh, what are those? The sour little roll, sour bite or something? I, don't uh, know. I know what you mean. Cashews? They're like licorice, but they're a sour stuff in them. Lemonade. No. Everybody likes them. What are you talking about? Yeah, I like, like gummy worms. I don't even think I have an opinion on them. It's <laughs> well, <so> I, have, <laughs> well, you, I can't. I can't. I can't. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm still uh, glad to eat the chocolates. Okay. I don't like the Yes. It's a very contentious topic here. Yeah. I'm gonna go with black. Black. Wow. Black wow. This was a bad idea. This today. is what else somebody else like? That's to be good black licorice. Right, right. right. That's what I'm saying. Man. And I was gonna say the same thing. You like gourmet black licorice. Like, right. That's right. Black and like you was a double market to make a special blend <laughs> of black licorice. <laughs> <laughs> I went. We were in Germany. They they have, they love licorice in Germany, and they have like this. They have these licorice stores. Nothing like they don't have those in the states at all. It's all these tons of candy. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. I like having a melty one. I'm going to turn it with like chocolate syrup. Mm. That's nice. Let's do basic. Okay. Do basic. That was good. <laughs> What's your answer? Yeah. MMs? Skittles? Uh, no, lint, uh, white chocolate. If you oh. get the outside, outside chocolate and then the inside like really nice stuff. And that's what melts in your mouth. Hershey mm -hmm. Kiss tastes too long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that we're so <laughs> such <laughs> animus. <laughs> this is yeah, I'm glad. This is exactly what I was hoping for. I really need to look at that. <laughs> dividing <laughs> dividing the board on consecutive <laughs> yeah. Uh <laughs> well, it's really, it's like it brings you back to Halloween when you've been trick-or-treating and then you dump out all the candy and everyone's like, oh, freaking, you got black licorice? That's gross. But then I would be like, oh, look, give me all that. <laughs> um, and you divide it all out. It's great. Um, yeah, I'm a big sour gummy worms person. I'm a big fan of sour gummy worms. Um, yeah. Although you don't usually get those on Halloween, or at least I never did. I think... In terms of like candy that I would get uh, in like a trick or treat scenario, probably like like Reese's peanut butter cups. I think were good. I was into that, um, or maybe Snickers. Mm -hmm. In the Halloween setting, I like the what is it, one hundred gram? Yeah. I like the Kit Kats, but I like them. From the, from the, from the, from the, I used to really like Butterfingers, and then I think they changed the recipe, and it's just not nearly as good anymore. <laughs> Something changed. Yeah. You and two years, you know the old recipe. <laughs> <laughs> if you had an old recipe <laughs> Butterfinger, he was out of date. He was out of date. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the new Coke. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I only drink the bottle Coke. <laughs> Taste it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, now that the fun's out of the way, let's do the serious meeting stuff. Um, uh, let's talk about the date and time of the next meeting. This will be the annual meeting, which I believe we already discussed a date for. 
Unless, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, though, there's some problems with that date. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, well. Um, essentially, that we, that was, uh, there's no, there was no way to get the parlor room for that date. Okay. And there's no way to actually get the parlor room for any date that works for us. So what my suggestion was going to be is I booked the Academy of Music for the crowdsource cinema screening, mm -hmm. which is November 26th, Sunday, before Thanksgiving. Before Thanksgiving? Okay. No, it's not Thanksgiving. Um, and so we could use that as our annual meeting then and have the annual meeting before crowdsource screening, which we've done before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would also take care of our, I was gonna, after securing the parlor room, the plan was I was going to reach out to people who had won the film sprints and or production grants and see, <clears throat> see how many people we could get who wanted to show their material at a screen and add those people to Melissa and Um We could just use... Like we, had a, we, had a, we had a good conversation, but it's obviously about... Yeah, I mean, people. maybe what we need to do is do that at some other time because yeah. it's a good idea and just use crowdsourced as our goal. Um, it would make things simple and it fits in our time. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not opposed to that if that's what if that's what people want to do. It actually, I do realize that this kind of launches into the conversation of uh, the uh, annual meeting planning thing, which is something, you know, that we're going to discuss at more length later. But um, yeah, I think for now, I would be I would be cool with making it a part of crowdsourced because uh, then we still, you know, get it in November. I guess the other thing is we could can we decouple the the board meeting in November from the annual meeting? I assume that yeah. we can. Yeah. yeah. So, I was just thinking that there will be also budget discussions, and so we have to make sure we have a good meeting venue. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Yeah. So do you want to have a board meeting separate from that? Is that what the suggestion is? Yes, I think that's the. That's yeah, I, I just figured I'd throw that out there, especially if we're gonna. Oh. Uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm, yes. Is uh, say this is for often. Um, the Academy of Music does sort of have a central room on to the side if we want to have like get more room to get or you know, this about you know, space or you know privacy in the day. Um, so um, if we have the green room downstairs and and in the back. This is side there's a side room where people often sell merch. Right, right. Oh, in the phone yeah. on the left yeah. side. Uh, I wasn't even thinking about that. Yeah. Uh it's just a question do we for the budget we need a good screen and we need the conversation and then you then we have an executive session about salaries. I, I don't know if this is the right venue to Combine, those. yeah, we probably need to. And, so, and the last time we did it, it went it launched. That's true, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I, I feel like we should separate it, I think it's better. Uh, yeah, it, oh, Jeremy's connecting again. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just, just to uh, share documents and stuff. Oh, I can. Uh, I was actually going to do that. Um, I've got the I've got the agenda up in front of me, and I was about to share the um, the minutes from last time for when we gotcha. discuss that. Um, so you don't have to worry about it. Although you should be allowed to share if you'd like to. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think that if we are going to be doing some more complex stuff during the next meeting, it probably does make sense to have it before the the annual because yeah usually we don't have more than like i mean i guess we could have more than an hour but it's a little tough to to do that because the annual meeting kind of we get kind of wrapped up in that so in that case looking at november um do we just want to try for november 14th when we were originally going to have the annual meeting for our next board meeting. Yeah. Um, it's Tuesday the 14th. Cool. Okay. Um, but you have the annual meeting. Yeah. Huh? The, we also plan to have the annual meeting. Yeah. 
And it's all recorded for And then for, so for the annual meeting, um, I had booked it for two o'clock for the meeting and three o'clock for the screen. So it's a Sunday. It's a Sunday. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's just do the the three o'clock screening then. Cool. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we can revisit the the topic of the annual meeting stuff uh, later in this meeting. But as but if we decide we're going to decouple the regular board meeting, have it earlier in the month, cool. As long as we have that out of the way and we know when that is. Uh, okay. Let's talk about the meetings meeting minutes from September. Oh, which I mislabeled in the schedule. Well, what can you do? Um. Let's, I'm going to screen share. Screen share. Can I, oh my God, I have so many, I have too many monitors. Look at all this. This is ridiculous. Um, yeah, I want to share Google Chrome. I don't need that. Okay. Um, am I sharing the right version of Chrome? Yes, probably. Okay. Um, yeah. These uh, on September twelfth, our last meeting, we had um, almost a full house. We had a lot of people. Uh, we had a great director's report, which we uh, sort of turned into more of a back and forth discussion, where we talked about um, just a lot of different stuff with Al. Uh, great job on the notes for that, Jeremy. Uh, we had a high school report was good. We had uh, a lot of discussions with the nominating committee. I talked about sort of the the out of syncness of of Jeremy and Melissa's terms. Uh, and then we sort of Jeremy was like, yeah, put all that in the minutes. And then I did. I don't know if it's any less confusing, though. But <laughs> But uh, but that's why I put a little thing in today's agenda about talking about it if people had more questions. Uh, but yeah, we talked about that. Um, we formed some, or we formed a committee for talking about the um, planning the annual meeting, which we've discussed a little bit already, and um, also talked about the the uh, the Dozy Doe parade and who was going to be at it, and it was going to be Florian and me, and we were there, although I was late. Uh, and yeah, and then that was it. So does anyone have any questions or comments about the minutes from September? Um, uh, motion to approve the minutes from September. Same. All right. All those in favor of approving the September minutes, say aye or raise your hand. Yeah, make sure if you raise your hand, you're in frame. That's important. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, great. I'm going to stop sharing for a sec. I'm probably going <laughs> to. Uh, uh, um, okay, so the next thing on the agenda is to go over the tasks document. So I'm going to screen share again to show the tasks document. Uh, let's take a look at that real quick. Here it is. The improvement uh, suggestion. Can you put a link in? I assume you have a template you send out every every month that you put in to this document as well yeah. in the email. Uh, is... Yeah, the agenda does have a link to the tasks document in it. Do you need it somewhere else? Do you need it in the email or somewhere? Yeah, if you, in the email. If, if it's not more work for you, if you put it in the email, that would be great. Yeah, I can do that. One last thought. Sure, that's fine. I have no problem with that. Um, for the tasks document, in terms of stuff that we're going to be discussing today, 
Um, I was supposed to meet with the employees, but I goofed it up and I didn't do that today. I apologize. <laughs> I, I basically forgot until like over the weekend. And then I was like, Al, wait, can I still do that? And that we couldn't. So I will probably have like a zoom meeting or maybe stop over to the station at some point before the next board meeting to have that discussion. The call uh, for nomination is complete. Cool. Yeah. Um, I was going to get to that, but uh, we will be talking about the audit stuff today, right? Um, uh, there's some commentary and yeah. Like, cool. Um, we talked about the annual meeting a little bit already, but we're going to be talking about that more today. Um, and yeah, the, the call for nominations uh, has been has been done. So that is completed. So I've reopened the proposal to Melissa if we're not doing it in the street, so I have to reach out to her and tell her that we're not showing. I, I can do that. I okay. have been in contact with her as well as the committee. Okay. Oh, uh, I can take care of it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, sorry, cool. I, I haven't. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm talking about the yeah. Um, And then I don't know if it's in, it's already in there, but um, I have some updates for the nominee. Oh. Great. It's a dog. It's on the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So yeah, I mean, I think people are set for the stuff that they're going to be doing that we're going to be doing today. Um, so this is looking pretty good. Uh, and I guess if other stuff comes up during this meeting, we can add it in. But um, yeah, everybody happy with how this looks, by and large. Yep. Cool. Okay, let's actually let's scoop back over and look at the agenda real quick, just because I don't think I've shown it yet. Uh, over Zoom. Oh, Michael's here. Hey, Michael made it. Hey, everybody. Sorry, I'm late. Just finished the other meeting. <laughs> cool. Thanks for thanks for getting over here. Uh, we just finished reviewing the tasks document so we are about to get into al's uh director's report uh and i'm just showing okay. the agenda real quick so everybody can see it and then i'll take it off and i'll let al take it away actually al if you have a way to share your doc um you have permission to so i'm just going to stop sharing now and you can go ahead and share yours whenever you'd like to Uh, Michael, stuff we've uh, already talked about at this meeting is um, some of the planning for the, the next one, which includes a little bit of the planning for the annual meeting, but we'll cover more of that later. Uh, and we talked about the minutes from last time, and we talked about our favorite kind of candy. So, you know, that's what you missed, just letting you know. <laughs> um, so here's the director's report for the last month. Um, we talked about the first item already, um, moving the annual meeting to... Uh, linked up with the Bradshaw Cinema Screening, which will be Sunday, November 26th at the Academy of Music. Um, the screening starts at 3. We can have the annual meeting as early as 2. Um, we produce candidate. Um, we're going to be producing a candidate's debate with the League of Women Voters uh, in the next month. Um, we also finished uh, shooting all of the candidate statements for people who are running for office in a POTUS um, contested races in the city of Northampton this year. Um, there's only one candidate. We didn't record a statement. Um, we just, I think, um, was not responsive to multiple uh, phone calls or emails. Um, I think just didn't go like that. Just, just didn't want to be talking. Um, there was one candidate who contacted me who's a writing candidate. Um, my inclination is not to record a statement with that person. It's a tricky, it's a tricky sort of call because a writing, a writing candidate is somebody who wants to be who isn't on the ballot, but who is encouraging people to write. You can write someone in if they're not on the ballot and have them run. The tricky thing is everyone is technically a writing mm -hmm. candidate in the city. And so it's hard to put a frame around um, somebody who is a writing candidate. Um, there's any other information to the board, well, we can certainly um, do something with that person. What I what 
my response was going to be is just to explain to them that you know we use the frame of candidates on the ballot um, who are in contested races and that, that person is free to produce something on their own and we'll air something that they'll produce on their own which is true of any candidate or any person in the whole community um, but that's, really, that's been how we've historically would it be feasible to, and I'm not saying now, but maybe in the future, have a, a day, uh, a time slot to maybe write in? Yes. To show, have to show a basis, or is there unforeseen things? I don't know. You know, it, it's really, it, it wouldn't be an issue for us to even shoot to, to record this person as a state. That was, if people felt that that was more fair. It's really just trying to see it through whatever the fair lens is. Uh, you How does it happen that someone becomes a or, There is no formal way of having a record. Anyone can be here. But why on is the it on the ballot? They're not on the ballot because okay. there's a process for getting on the ballot, declaring yourself a candidate for office, and there's a deadline that the city has, and there's a certain number of signatures, and there's, there's some other things too. You have to physically, um, I think, and Michael probably speak to this, but you have to physically, I think, take your, your, your piece of paper, you have to go down to City Hall and take it from one person in an office and hand it to another person. Something that's formally what has to happen. So there's these sort of the procedures. There's the procedures in place that the city has determined are the way you become a candidate for office. So anyone, yeah. No, it's interesting this year too, because in the at-large race, one of the candidates didn't, like it's a very weird thing where you have to you drop off all these signatures, they certify them, and they tell you, hey, they're ready. And you go and pick them up, and you literally walk in, they hand them to you, and you turn and hand them to someone else standing next to the person on the other yeah. side of the desk. It's very weird. But yeah. th someone didn't do this part, and yeah. so they didn't get on the ballot. And then they were like, actually, like the law doesn't support this position. So then the city caved and put them on the ballot. So I don't know going forward if they'll amend the process. I, I don't know. But it is the whole thing is very it's it's something to go through. Yeah, it's very weird. Yeah. We missed that person initially, actually, because they weren't on our official list for that reason. And then found out that they had been placed on the ballot after them. then we reported uh, <laughs> their statement. Like what what is the risk in terms of, of transparency? Like if you allow writing candidate and they there it can be that everyone says, Oh, I'm a writing candidate, uh, I, that was an interview. Like, if anything, in terms of transparency, it would be good to have the candidate in the forum. Right. So I think but, the case, the case for is that we're just being, you know, if this person is saying that they're a candidate for office, we're sort of honoring that they're saying that they're a candidate for office and including them in our process. The flip side of it is anyone, I mean, this is a theoretical example, but theoretically the entire city could show up and say, I'm a writing candidate and we are responsible for important videos for every single person in the city, which is going to be laborious. That's not what's happening right now, but it's just, a, again, it's just about a frame, you know. Another, and I, I, obviously I'm just thinking of just hypotheticals, but another thing that might be a cause of concern is that we schedule these in, you know, weeks in advance, and then if somebody says that they're a writing candidate, then, you know, X amount of weeks after things happen, there's things transpiring in the races, and they might have additional knowledge and they might use it for, you know, they, I don't know if there's any limits to what they say, but they have additional information. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. They yeah. have additional information to say, maybe, you know, like this candidate, this happened in blah, 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 in which another candidate would, would be. They never scheduled it, and the, the other candidate doesn't have a chance to respond or anything. Yeah, there's, I mean, it is, after, thinking, you know, know. it is after our deadline that we set as well. It's after the deadline. I mean, we, uh, I will say that as well, that we did, we, you know. But it's the question, how, the, how is the deadline communicated? Can we announce any right of any candidate, any writing candidate? We don't contact writing candidates, because writing candidates are everybody. No, that's what it's so, like, and it's not in the, the real candidates. In the, in the known newsletter or whatever, like it's not yeah. published in some no. So the deadline is not an official deadline. So no. It can be. Uh, Right, because we only contact candidates on the ballot who are running a poll. Okay. So that's that's one thing. I think one of the like if it's organization and not the problem with the pay that the 
that is what I've done. And the question is, do we need them to think about a procedure to do it? I think, I mean, I think if we contact the writing candidate and say, hey, you could record your own five minute video, that's a good, then that yeah. might be a solution that meets, allows that person, that person still has access to voice and has access to, it's just that they're not participating in the frame that we set up. Yeah. We could think of a different frame in the future, or we could change this frame. It feels a little bit, maybe it is unfair to change this frame now for the people who are already in the process. Yeah. But, and the other candidates also have the opportunity to take to move through the They do. So it's, you know. Um, we could have a day for writing candidates. I mean, <laughs> you know, if we do that, we have to accept anyone coming in and saying anything at that point. It becomes very difficult. I mean, possible. On on way We like to be as clean right. as possible when we do any government stuff. Yeah, so that's very funny. We get Berman's Supreme. You know, Berman's Supreme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've interviewed him. Side note, we've interviewed him twice for the transcripts. <laughs> Two separate occasions, we got to read this Berman Supreme. All right, do we, I, I don't know, do you need guidance? Like, it, it sounds like that this proposal that the candidate can send something in, which is quite close to what anyone can do anyway at any time. Yeah. And then, yeah, I think that's a little bit becomes a problem we can do. Is it if the procedure needs to, if there needs to be a procedure? Yeah, that, yeah I, would, I would say, I mean, yeah. Not that or? I'm just letting you know that's what I'm, that's how I'm handling it. If you have to disagree, this is your opportunity to say you, you think as a board I shouldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'm fun. just I'm happy that you're still giving them airtime. That's I think that's what matters to me. So if they want to, see yeah, I mean, you know, show it, that's cool. We're, our goal is to be fair, and I mean, that's generally what we're yeah. what our goal is. And everything. So, I mean, and, and we're all assuming it's a he. You know, I keep saying he. <laughs> is it, oh, really? <laughs> I don't even know. Actually. Okay. I, I feel I like you've all referred to him as a he, and I'm like. In my head, it's definitely a he. Right? I don't know why. <laughs> I know I, I could. I, I don't. Yeah, I have no idea. Actually. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, um. So, so that's what's going on with candidates. Uh, we have upcoming. We have the debates coming up. Those those things are airing, um, in a random order, uh, front to back. Meaning they play, all of them play in a random order, forward, and then they play in the reverse. Um. We covered the, the, the Doozy Do Parade live this month. We covered the Pulaski Parade, which hasn't happened since before COVID, live as well this month. Um, we're wrapping the edit of Crowdsource Toy Story. This is our most difficult crowdsource film we've done, um, meaning we had lower participation than in any other year. We're not sure. I think I've mentioned this before. We're not sure if it's because it was an animated film, uh, which made it more difficult, and it was definitely more difficult, or if it was. Um, just a post-pandemic sort of continuation, some post-pandemic trends that we're seeing uh, with us and other organizations, so. or some combination. But we have a complete film to show. Um, also, they're going to screen the Vermont version of the film, as you know, or I may have said in the past, Vermont does a version of the film, Boston does a version of the film. We have two other communities who want to do about the film next year as well. Um, uh, and so the Vermont version of the film will actually screen at the Alliance for Community Media Northeast Regional Conference in Burlington, Vermont this fall, up here in Burlington. So that should be fun. Um, as a tie to that, I've been asked to be on the programming group for next year's national conference for the Alliance for Community Media, and I've accepted um, to help program that conference. So uh, I'll be doing some of that with my time. Um, Great, some very good news. We were accepted into the APE Gallery Workroom Cooperative. Um, so we are bartering um, network bandwidth um, that we have at 33 Holly Street. And um, instead of uh, buying into the cooperative, which most uh, members do, and um, this will grant us time inside of that space. We'll have a full week. Uh, we think our week is gonna be in August. Um, to program inside of the workroom. We'll also have a number of weekends up through the year. I think it's four full weekends over the year. Um, 
that you can use that space to program as well. And weekly four hour blocks as well, which I think are going to be on Wednesdays. Um, we're working out the schedule in details now, um, but we'll be, you know, we'll have access to the space during that time for free. Um, so uh, one of my intentions is to program something in that week in August, it's pretty large community wise. Um, and we'll start talking about that as staff uh, moving forward. Uh, so we're happy about that. It's a lot of time, actually. It's quite a bit of time. Um, I mean, a week is an enormous chunk of time. Um, so it'll be interesting to think about that. And it's nice to have the four hours a week. It could mean that's a weekly studio slot that we have. The community coming in pretty soon in that space, it's a huge space. Uh, so, and that might be interesting in the student side. Maybe there's something that we could do with students yeah, so in that space that is larger scale. <clears throat> Uh, maybe that's a weekend. Yeah. So um, those are the highlights of the last. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, the parade was fun. <laughs> it's a nice parade. Yeah, it was a nice parade. It was short, but it was fun. Um. It was bigger than it was. It was a lot bigger than that this year than it was last year. Oh, really? Maybe I saw all the footage from last year and it looked bigger, but I wasn't actually there. I just watched the footage. So maybe the footage just made it, made it look bigger than it was. Last year felt more fanciful. Mm. It felt more lively. It was a beautiful day last year. Yeah. And the yeah. there were more people on the side. Yeah, I, I think so, Jake. I don't know about that. Yeah. But that was a good time. Um, okay, uh, Al, can you stop screen sharing? Yes. Cool. Uh, okay. Well, up next, we have the high school report. Yeah. Um, so this week, it is Spirit Week. Um, which means that next Saturday is homecoming. Uh, we're planning to get just our standard coverage of that. So I mean, photographers there, any photos for Flickr. Um, today we had a transcript alumni, uh, Lulu Pesson. She came in and gave a little presentation about her experience with uh, journalism, specifically sports journalism uh, in college, and just the influence that the transcript has after after high school. Um, the Northampton Youth Cinema Festival is being planned right now um, with myself, another student, and Brian Foote from the Arts Council. Um, that's good. And I think the date we have in mind is in my calendar. I want to say April 19th, that Friday. Um, the, the transcript has secured an interview with uh, journalist Rachel Maddow. It's uh, either tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, which is going to be at the Academy. Um, and we also got an interview last week with um, award winning musician uh, Priya Darshina, who came to school and gave a performance. We're not going to have a good battery as well. What's the equipment that's the Northampton Youth Center Festival? Is, oh, it's with Brian Putty from the Art Council? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Is, is this something thinking about the board being present? Do you, from the new side, do you want anyone from the board? Yeah, definitely. So we were thinking um, having some sort of, definitely a presence of North Hampshire Media. Media. Um, it would be awesome to have you guys there. Uh, one of our ideas was uh, maybe we could have some volunteers run, you know, run a merch table or something like that. Uh, stickers, hats, um, you don't know. Yeah, when it, when it comes to those independent places. Yeah, definitely when that date comes up. We have to click on our service, but at least it is open here. But everyone knows when it's cool. But yeah, we got to get a new face. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, aside from that, uh, one thing uh, that kind of influences the trajectory of the program, I have. There was a little discrepancy last year. I was basically a consultant for the yearbook. The yearbook historically has been some of uh, the, the fundraiser for um, 
to NHS tech alongside um, support from Northampton Open Media. Um, for years, I ran the yearbook, um, managing the assets and putting it together and everything. Uh, and the the uh, out after the free books for free and reduced lunch kids, we would have you know a, a couple of thousand dollars of fundraiser stuff that we put back into the getting equipment and stuff. Um, I I took a kind of consulting role last time uh, last year on the yearbook, uh, and so I lost the ability to use some of those funds. So now I'm back as a co-advisor to it. I was helping out all the time anyways with it, um, with Jennifer Clarkson, the, the yearbook advisor. But now I'm back. Um, so we do have um, some funds that we're going to be allocating. Uh, the uh, Ellie, uh, here at Andani, and Jasmine Fu, who is our uh, senior news producer, are both of the students' um, leaders in charge of that student activity and account. Uh, and so I'm going to be taking it through the budgeting process. Uh, because we didn't, I, I wasn't able to access that. The money piled up over basically two years, uh, and uh, we're looking at about we have about seven thousand to uh, So it's so a good chunk of change. We can do a lot. Um, LA's eyes are really wide right now, um, and so I just I just had a um, meeting with uh, Bill Worley, the, the the principal, and uh, he also was um, interested in trying to find some dedicated funds for additional. Uh, equipment, but that um, budgeting process I'm going to be working with, um, obviously, internally in the school, but I think it's a good learning process for the students. And so uh, just thinking about presenting that to this body as well, uh, because we're getting the media and it's uh, such a great you know, sponsor of us, so we can kind of strategically utilize those resources and see where you're getting the media can fill in. So be on the lookout in the next few months um, on what uh, the, the budget entails in there. Um, looking to put together some stuff. Uh, traditionally, I, I would use Black Fr uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday for really good deals. I'm going to figure on, you know, a say a fleet of cameras. It was a great time to get stuff. So we're going to be kind of keeping our eyes peeled, and we might have some stuff even as soon as uh, next um, next meeting for you to kind of look over and discuss. Cool. Nice. Um, oh, I actually wanted to circle back real quick to the, um, uh, what was the event that you said that you would like to see a board presence at, Ellie? Um, yeah, the Northampton Houston Cinema Festival, which is going to be uh, April 19th. April 19th? Um, yeah, that's the festival thing right now. Okay, cool. Break. Yep. Because uh, that, that week of school break is um is like the the, the youth cinema sprint. Um so and then the, the festival is gonna come up the same time. So it's either that private uh Friday or Saturday. Where where do they hold it? Um oh yeah, it's so it's at the academy. Uh we get that space um for I think that whole week um for the mornings. That's awesome. It, yeah. uh, okay. it, it's like um, where Brian was saying to me about um, they they choose the film that they just screen every day. Right. Cool. All right. Yeah. No. I mean, at, at first I was like, let's figure out who's going to be there, and then I thought, you know, it's still a ways away. We kind of don't need to figure that out yet. A lot of it. <laughs> um, but we're gonna be there. Somebody's gonna be there for sure. I'm very interested. Uh, yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, that everything for the high school report. All right. Cool. Um, okay, up next, uh, I wanted to talk, uh, or, or maybe not, to talk a little bit about the term limit stuff and the situation that um, Melissa and Jeremy are in if there's still any confusion about that, which is understandable if there is because it's a little complicated. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to be able to take questions on that since we talked about it briefly last time. I put some notes in the minutes. But yeah, did anyone, does anyone still not exactly understand how that's working or need to know anything about that? I would say from my standpoint, it might 
it's I think it's a unique situation we hold it to only us two. Yeah. And I think based on the uh how many how many vacancies we have two. Yeah. So yeah. So I think it's a bit of a moot point. Um I kind of welcome a new a new guard in, in yeah. that if I were to say on then we have right now we're gonna be talking about it, but we have two qualified candidates who are interested mm -hmm. uh you know being on the board and stuff. And uh I think that you know giving giving some new perspective and opportunity. Um, you know, I welcome that. Um and so I know that Melissa in conversations with, with her as well. Um I don't I, she's she's also um she's at the point of kind of uh, being done as well. Sure. So, I, I think it's another point which is on the agenda as well. Like the, and I didn't prepare. Thank you for sending me this email about preparing a proposal for the uh, expanding of the board. Uh, that's a question. If if the board is interested in this, um, <laughs> does it make sense to not just do two seats but expand the board by two seats and have more working people? uh in, in there and i didn't prepare anything because i wanted to like the last time we brought it up but we didn't, like i didn't have a uh, i didn't see the conclusion of oh that's what the board was going to then we would have to make the proposal for the for the uh, change of the bylaw and in this context it might make sense that i, I don't know what this candidate situation is right now i understand there might be four candidates available who would like to find the board if, one of them doesn't realize, then we would have the, the fallback back maybe, but I don't know how to um, stack it that in a, in a, in a, in a, in a okay way. So my my question would be, and I'm sorry, is, is it something that what we should we pursue the expansion, or is it something people don't feel like? Well, hold on on that for a second okay. because. Um, if we're not going to talk about the math of the term limits, because people are cool with that, so I don't need to go through it. Just wanted to make sure um, that then we can just segue into the nominating committee. And I do have something about that, which I put in. Uh, I think I put it in the minutes because I had talked about it briefly last time, but it's worth bringing up again for the incoming people, which is because they will be starting on a year that they are not technically supposed to start on as per the current bylaws, uh, they would either be serving their first term as half a term, so just for one year instead of two, uh, and then they would only have a total of seven years on their total term years, uh, or the board could decide later to give them uh an extra term or something because they're they started off you know with less of one it's kind of just like up to how people are feeling about it um but i do want to make sure we are on the schedule and sticking to the schedule of the new bylaws yeah as, as much as possible so obviously like jeremy was saying it's a unique circumstance it's a little it's a little fiddly with the math because we have people who are on the old system and now we're trying to implement the new system. So yeah, it would just basically be like the people who are coming now who are elected positions would uh, be serving a year and then technically their first term would be ending and they would just be running again and probably just continuing on to another term. But just so like those people are aware of that because that is kind of the fiddly situation we get put in. Historically, is it a challenge that I, that people stay on too long? Like, is it, like how many of the people who find it what stay for eight years? You know, I don't, yeah. What I is the percentage? Long time. I think, I think most, many people have turned out. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think Alex, your term is up this year, though, isn't it? As well. Um, I don't think it is, but I can look. <laughs> I think you should look at that. I will look at that. In our information doc, it says that. Oh, I thought I still had so another. I, I still thought I still had another two years in me. But appointed in twenty eighteen, elected in twenty twenty. Yeah. 
So if it's 2018. Well, you were appointed in 2018 yeah. and then you were elected in 2020. Mm -hmm. And it's a total of four two year terms. No, 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 no. The terming out is something different than the. I don't mean two year terming out. I mean, are you is your seat open? You have to be reelected, right? That's the comment. Oh yeah, am I a, am I an elected position? I believe right? so. Yeah. yeah. Then, then oh, it should be. Well, now I need to open up the bylaws because I don't have. Oh, yeah, oh, but there it's in. I put it in the minutes. Uh, uh, and my position is open as well, though. No, you were. The terms were three years. These were three years. At least in this, in this yeah, because because on the original system, the terms were you had three three year terms, and we changed it to four two year terms, because we wanted people more opportunities in case you know people were coming in and out. There was a yeah. there's a whole, whole thing, but uh, let's see here. Uh, appointed terms shall start on even calendar years, which would be 2024. Elected terms start on odd calendar years, which would be 2025 in our case. So my next term would be ending or would be up in 2025, not 2024. Um, again, I got brought in on the old system, so the years are going to be fiddly. But that's why I keep that's why I'm talking about it for these two elected people that are coming in. They're coming in on an even year, which is when appointed people are supposed to join up with the board. Do you see what I'm saying? No. Yeah. I think just from my perspective, uh I would not want I think that the new board would be the ones to make the decision on the because one is the, we're thinking about. And then next is the one else. And then these people are not in the one anymore. Wait, because you're saying that anymore? Then we have been reduced to candidates, and then we would have to go to a procedure afterwards. At the moment, we're in this new situation that there is actually more people who are interested. Like, our problem is finding people. And we have, we would have enough people. We don't have enough to determine. I think we have four candidates who were very interested. I have two candidates that have responded to me. And I we have three. I have currently three that I've reached out to. Yeah, Jeremy, we, you left out the candidate that like I poached that we talked about at length in multiple meetings. <laughs> so we like, oh, and I actually um I had the wrong uh email for you. So it bounced back and I just saw that now. So I put you on the nominate uh, the nominee thing, but we didn't, we didn't, but we can revisit it. Actually, it's a good time. I know we're jumping around, but it's a good time to actually talk about the nominating committee. No, we are. This is I. I said we were segueing into the nominating committee. So yeah, no, oh, we're, okay. we're, we're in it. We're in. Okay, it. so the in the tracker, there's two candidates that have um, given their biographies. Mm -hmm. One, uh, one of the nominees, um, Thomas Grout. Grout, Grout. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, didn't respond yet, but I just uh, emailed him. I can also email the, the fourth person, but I had confirmed with you that there were three that I that we knew of. Who was the fourth person that was, was missed out on this? Uh, the, the fourth person was William Arnold, who, again, I've brought up at the last like three meetings uh, and in our okay. meeting together, Jeremy. But uh, yeah, no, I, um, I so, yeah, wasn't sorry. aware of what uh i needed from him other than like an email so i put the email in there and then i actually texted him like just now to be like hey do you want to write a statement and he said sure and then i was like oh do you want to send a headshot i don't know if he has one of those but we'll see gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> um so i mean we're not we're not in a bad shape at all like i, I put in the the tracker like just extended so friday so just the the document that you missed because i was sending it accidentally to the ink the ink email or whatever mm -hmm. yours but i just used your new email on the thomas drop one cool um but i'll put him in if you want to use the document in the tracker to put um arnold in there you have that one in there i didn't have uh that one because well my so yeah this this was a problem because when i joined up in the board i had my old email i think but i changed it in the like board document that has all our yeah. contact info a while it, back it's my fault 
it's not but, your fault. Though. Well, it's one of those things that like Gmail wants to remember a certain email. Like I almost always send it to the wrong email for Tim and then I have to stop myself and be like, no, it's comedy as a weapon. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> yeah. So send it to improbable hate. Yeah, don't, don't you but do that. Regardless, so in any case, you are now in out know, on the one to Thomas. If right. you want to follow the will, put that into the, the document. Mm -hmm. And so now we have three candidates confirmed because we'll say you we get from MS Yes. Okay. So that's it. Yes. The only person, so Thomas Campbell, uh, was Alex, this, I, I, Ryan, yeah, I but I Thomas Strott didn't respond yet. So we theoretically have three confirmed. Mm -hmm. So we have three confirmed. Okay. That brings us then back. We have a fourth one if you say one year longer, for example. That's just hope much a possibility. But again, you seem you you seem a little bit critical about expanding the board, if I read this correctly. No, I just don't want to be the one in that position because it would be I would be expanding a position that it sounds like I would be included in here, or you're right now. If we have three. Right now. If there's a four. Then I'm comfortable doing it. Okay, that's it. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't want, want to vote on yourself. I don't want to vote on myself to be the board. Yeah. Let's well, put on the conflict of interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of there. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I would recuse myself anyways, but I mean, yeah. it, it's a conversation that is having with me there. If not in discussion, then in presentation. Just as a side comment, um, from, like, I guess, a historical standpoint, if the board wanted to expand, and I'm, I don't know, I'm not going to stand this, but if the board wants to expand and add two seats, we could, as an option, have one be elected and one elected. Hmm. You don't need to add elected seats. That's true. But I would say if you do add two seats, the, his the history of the organization is that. You know, there's seven seats on this board currently, and four are member elected, and that, that's intention. Because the intention is that the power of the majority of the power of the board is elected. Yeah. That's the design. So if you went to nine, yeah, I think you know you would want to add one at least one elected position because then we still retain that majority, and that sort of holds up. So we do a little bit more time in terms of the seating. Yeah. Okay. So just break the good. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, uh, oh, I have a question. Um, I'm looking at the document that, so Jeremy, I did get that email. Um, and I'm looking at the document that was shared for board nominees. Um, I added the fourth person to it and I'm wondering, so have, so we haven't heard back from Thomas yet, but we did hear back from Alexandra. I'm seeing yep. that. Yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah. Great. So. So yeah, is there a is there a hard deadline? Uh, I would say, well, we, I have in the tracker right now Friday. I gave it uh, from last last week. I gave one week. We could probably do Monday, maybe. I think Fridays. I mean, Friday will be fine for Bill. I know that. So I. Yeah, I for the election deadline, it's like one month before or something. Um, it's so. Well, we'll just move me in. And one month right before. now right now the deadline in the tracker is october 20th but it theoretically could be october 26th. yeah so i guess like uh if we, I, uh, yeah we'll hope to hear from from thomas before then but if we have to give him those extra couple days we possibly can yeah yeah cool. for sure okay um but yeah, okay. Um, so that sounds good, and I really like the the two bios uh, and the and the uh, the headshot. Tom's headshot, Thomas Campbell's headshot's great. <laughs> <laughs> so good, perfect headshot. Um, okay, so yeah, good stuff. Um, so if we so we had talked, so the conversation we just had and just to um clarify it for me because audio is a little garbled 
Uh, I got most of it. But just like, so for expanding the board, we want to try to have that be a discussion that the the new board has, right? So when whoever these two people who are running who get elected, when after they come in, then we will bring up like, okay, we have these other two people that are still interested. Do we want to expand the board? Jeremy did. <laughs> well, that sounded know. like that's what Jeremy's opinion was. Correct me if I'm wrong. That was, Jeremy's that was my opinion. That was not, yeah. yeah that was okay. Because what I are, said. Okay. Yeah. To clarify, yeah, if we have four candidates, uh -huh. I feel comfortable with with having that discussion debate as a member of the board. Yeah. If there are only if there's less than four candidates, there's an implication that either myself or Melissa would be and it, it would have an extended role. In yeah. which case, even if I recuse myself, I still think that the implications of that I would want I would not want to have that discussion as a yeah, I th and I think I agree with that. I think that's a very good stance to take. Um, so does that mean we should have that discussion if uh, the second Thomas uh, does get back to us about stuff? Because then we will have four. I don't like, based on the, based on the comment Ellie made, we can also say we put, we extended by one elected and one Appointed and for the appointed, we have more time that we can. That's true. That's true. Yeah. We can, like, we, we could feel it. It's, I think it's really a question as to what is it the right time to decide now and who we want to expand that. But yeah. what does it make sense for everyone? Um, yeah. Well, that's the other thing, right? Like, this is still a very preliminary discussion about board expansion. I basically like realized we had a potential for people uh like a week ago or something or a couple weeks ago and that's why i reached out to florian because i was like oh i know florian has talked about uh a desire to expand the board and a lot of my hesitancy to that in the past has always been well we don't usually have that many interested people but if we do find ourselves in that situation which it seems like we might uh then i figured it would be worth starting that discussion but obviously it's just the start of that discussion so we don't need to Decide well, on if, if it boils down, should I sit down and write a proposal for the change of the bylaws? Or, like, if, the board, if everyone here is against it, it's just a waste of time. I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, there's enough going on. So, if the question is, is, is there interest and is there the belief that this would add to the board? That's really a question to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, uh, if, 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 if you guys see that, uh, otherwise, you know, um, I, I I personally think it would help because we have a lot of we have quite some work and we want to be active, so it would be good to have more people. Uh, it also can cause problems, so it's not like we can talk about it in five years again to see if it was a good idea or not. That's a different that's a different conversation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that like I I certainly am. Uh, uh, it lately I have come more to the side of being encouraging of it. I think it's a I think it's a good idea, and there there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, partly because we have the interest, but also because the board has been really great about um, uh, pretty much everybody showing up to meetings pretty consistently, or a high percentage of people. Uh, people have been really engaged and more involved, and I'm just like, and we and one of our sort of hopes for the board is to have the board continue to be more involved. And if we have more people, it becomes a little easier to do that. So I think it there is a good argument for it being worth considering. And again, if Florian does write up something, it's still only a proposal and we just move to the next stage of talking about it. Um, but yeah, I definitely do want to hear from uh, Michael, from Ellie, from Tim, just to see how you folks feel about uh, expanding the board. If you have any thoughts on it, well, <laughs> so, uh, I think they could, I mean, it's a, it's a good idea to expand it. Um, I guess I guess the concern is the final uh, Tim, I'm going to ask you to move closer to the microphone. <laughs> oh, You'll be a comedian one. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just a time frame. I think it's a good idea. I think um, um, we should. Um, 
I think the more ideals that we have and the more like participation in the board always a positive thing. <clears throat> um yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. I think that more voices where representation is good. I think the only worry for me would just be like, are we able to get those people? And it sounds like if yes, then I don't really see a reason why should well, it's like I think long term the importance is that the activity which is created is, is sustainable. Mm -hmm. That's like the question. Yeah. When, when the Comcast fees go down and there's nothing to do anymore, then they cut away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. <clears throat> Um, I have a I have a similar feeling, you know, I think it's probably a good idea as long as you think you can sustain that level of interest and have good people because you we you wouldn't want to find yourself in a situation where you're having a hard time filling the seats. Like that's the only risk, uh, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. You know. And I, I don't know enough about how the the flow of board members has been over time to say, you know, if this new interest is is a blip a normal or, or or you know is sustainable i just don't know yeah i mean my uh, to to that my feel on it is that before i joined up with the board there was a lot less consistency or at least you were coming out of an era of less consistency but it feels like since i've been around which has been a while uh things have been pretty solid so, um, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, with uh, with Jeremy's caveat of the four people, uh, I think it would be worth Florian you writing something up and sending it out for us to look at. Okay, I can do that. Well, also without my caveat, because we can also wait. Well, that's long. true. Yeah, totally. So, so yeah, Florian, just write something up. <laughs> and then I, okay, but I hear it's it's. It's basically supported, and we have to see what are the details. And yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for the I think yeah. I think it's I think it's worth moving to the next round of discussions for with some with some uh, some bylaws write up. Uh, great. Okay. Well, that covers a bunch of stuff. So let's. Uh, I'm going to screen share the schedule again just so people can see where we're at and what more we have to do. Real quick. Uh, okay, here's the agenda. Again, we just finished up the board expansion discussion. So next we have conflict of interest rules, which I did not put on here. I suspect Florian no, I, did. I <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, I haven't you um also get a board source, but it's, I've been trying to I've been intending to look at some other location. I haven't found another location yet. I haven't um, spent much time so I should put that on a task. Maybe we put it on the task. Yeah. Like this is just something yeah. I based on our conversation, yeah. we need to do something there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um I also realized looking at this, I am always putting a lot of things there. I like I'm I, it's important for me to contribute in this way. If someone else wants to take the lead on that, I would be very happy. Like I don't know how much time I have to work on all this thing. Um yeah so yeah so that'll be my task so Okay, I'm putting board source, but I don't think it's a hmm. I think yeah, it should be. I, 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 it is. So I, when you say that, um, we need someone to to go forward to continue to look into this conflict of interest. Well, oh, no, 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 no. Alan's going to do the research into stuff, and then the, the and any yeah. actual formal like board action or drafting of stuff will be done. I was saying, yeah, I oh, can. that you prepare something and okay, yeah. But can yeah. you take this over that you push for this? Oh uh, yeah. Then it's then it's it, 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 kind of off my brain. That's what you say. <laughs> and if we can put it on the task list as well, then then we have it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so I threw I threw board source alternative on there, but if you want me to specify that it's specifically for conflict of interest, I can. Oh, uh, that's a separate. That's the separate. Point. I just put it in a comment. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I see that. Cool. Yeah. And I just put the date of the next board meeting. So the 14th. Thank you. Uh, cool. Okay. Great. Um, are we good to move to the 
uh, audit setup? Uh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's again, we, I had some conversation around this topic. Uh, and as always, this is more complicated than, <laughs> than it seems. Uh, one of the ideas was actually uh, who should check who? And the question is, do we, and I know that that's very difficult to achieve, should we have members from the general public or the, the membership audit what the board is doing as well? So one, like it's again, who does the tasks and how is it set up? Um, it might be interesting that not another a board member is doing the auditing, but the general public, it is the membership, the general membership is looking at are we following the processes and asking us critical questions uh, to challenge what's going on there. Uh, and then uh, that, that's one comment, like because we tried to find a way of of approaching this, that, that there's one or two board members who does do this task, but might be, I, I don't know if this is feasible in our setup. Um, the second thing is, and we're, we don't really have a progress on the auditing part. Uh, an alternative to, might be that we find someone who audits us independent of the, the, the bookkeeping audit, which we need or don't need, it's a little bit, and, and tell us what are procedures where, like, really audit us in the way and tell us what we are doing good in a process point of view, the procedure point of view as the organization. That's what Henry and Henry sports was kind of this, this similar level of questions we could be asking ourselves. Yeah, I feel like the kind of, I feel like the way it would describe the character of our conversations with the accountants around the audit is they, they seem shocked that we do not require an audit by law and they seem shocked that we would want to have one if that's not the case, right? Because every time we ask them, the response is, well, we'll see if we need an audit because we don't think we do. And we're saying we like an audit. Like the, the task we do. That it seems like that's the conversation. That's how we characterize the conversation down with the accountants. So I think we maybe just need to be more aggressive. But if they don't take it on, it might make sense to have someone else audit. Like I don't know if in like sports I, I I don't I don't know specifically. Like if we're looking at knowledge, how to improve our organizations and set up processes better, mm -hmm. there is for sure someone who is specialized in this. So looks at this and gives us key recommendations, and it might be even good to have them separated from the bookkeeping auditors because they have anyway to say. And if like ten thousand dollars, someone that's the budget we had, I think. Yeah. Um, if like that's the framework, we should can work with something that there's someone in there. And we have a budget of around five hundred thousand dollars a year, so that's not a that's not a small change. My change money. So. Well, it's less than five. That's um, actually it, a lot. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's not it's not like uh, five thousand dollars yearbook budget. Like there's there's, yeah. there's there's money flowing. So we I think it's our responsibility to be happy. And maybe seven, seven, <laughs> seven <laughs> over ten years. That's kind of budget, right? Yeah, we have to that two thousand. Audit it. Audit it. <laughs> uh, it might make sense to move this out, but it's again sorry. This is a little bit of of rambling around. It's a complicated topic and. I, I feel we need some guidance, whatever that means. So guidance or best practice, but I also agree that I mean, if the if our auditors are saying like, why would you do this to yourself? Like we need something, maybe we need an alternative of looking at best practices, but we also might find an avenue for people. So we you know? we could approach them with that. They might be able to steer us towards like if we're looking the... to do like a you know, like you could do a full tax audit, right? Or you could just do like a health, like a credit health check, right? I'm just talking about like personal finances, right? We, we kind of, I think, if we want to tone it down a little bit, we need someone who looks at our, our organization and and tells us what are we good at, what are we not good at. Like you, uh, Michael, you have been through some fun times at the school board. If they have would have looked at this at some point, maybe someone could have pointed it out and avoid. Avoid the outcome and the yeah, because it's it seems like you have like sort of two different 
two different things that could be one thing or could be discrete, right? So it's like the the getting feedback on processes, policies, and controls, which could be different than a financial audit, right? Or it could yeah. be related, but or, or different, right? So it's sort of what sort of advice do you want? And if it's you want someone to tell you how you might improve your your practices versus just giving you an audited financial statement, you know, it's two different, it could be two different things or it could be part of a larger thing. But yeah, I think it's probably a good idea to have someone come in either, you know, people do these in different ways. Like there's trade groups that do these, there's peers that do them, depending on what the culture is among peers. There's firms that do, you know, it's, I don't know the world of uh, public access TV enough to know what's normal, but, or, you know, there's just nonprofit consultants. That would be sort of maybe the, the, the easier option. But if we figured out what the things are, we want them to give us feedback on, um, we could find a way to, to, I think, to bid that out or find the right, the right group to help, you know? I, yeah, given how, and that's how I, I don't mean it in really bad, how uncontentious the board is with itself, uh, it might be good to have a critical voice tell us something and have this conversation. And it, it, as you say, it's a different perspective from the financial view. With, it sounds like you really are not going to get anywhere with the with you anyway from the auditor, from the from the bookkeeping company, from the accountant. So we can just let it be. We don't have to do it. It's more paperwork, and we we try to that put them. I don't know, leave in a glass or whatever. It's like someone looking at what you do and tell us what we need to improve and. I think a nonprofit consultant makes like. Sense. Yeah, I mean, I, I always think it's a, a good idea to get those perspectives because they'll tell you things you didn't know existed that would be helpful or mm -hmm. things to protect yourself that you didn't know you had to protect yourself from. You know, it's sort of, it's just good to move things forward or things change in the the law or the change in, in the practice of how nonprofits are run that we may not be aware of and they can, you know, help us um, probably have some examples to show. Yeah. It can't yeah. hurt us. It can't yeah. hurt us. It it yeah. Okay. And you don't uh, have to accept any of the recommendations. If you went through the thing, you might say, yeah, we don't think that's the right move or we want to do something else. It's not like it's a, it's not binding. Like you, you wouldn't want that to happen, but you're not, you're only committing yourself to, to exploring it and learning it, you know? Yeah. But it, yeah, it's good to have the outside perspective. Yeah. Uh, okay, what's a good way to take this forward? Do we do, do we know anyone who does? Well, we could, the chamber has, we could go to the chamber and see, they have uh, recommendations. They work with a lot of nonprofits in the, uh, in the area, and they need to be just aware of that. Oh, and moment, what is this the part of the? We're part of the chamber, okay. and we we have we we're on a conversational footing with them. Okay. Then I there's something I could do to get in contact okay. with them and, and see if this is an avenue which makes sense. Yeah, I'm happy to. Uh, I'd be happy to to ask some. I I have some, at least some neighbors who are consultants of various stripes. But I think I understand the network of consultants here better than I. They might have a, a recommendation or two that we should look at. Um, I'm happy to ask ask them as well. That would be great. Sure. Cool. Okay, good. We got next, we got a good next step. Good discussion. Anything else anybody wants to add on that? All right. Uh, well, for the final thing of the evening, we are going to circle back to something we actually talked about a little bit at the beginning, which is the uh, annual meeting planning committee, um, which was Al, Florian, and Tim. Uh, so you folks had already said uh, and that um, you can't get the parlor room. So we're thinking of doing it uh, at the academy, uh, pairing it up with crowdsourced. 
So is there any other stuff you want to add about things you might want to change to the existing structure of crowdsourced or uh, any other ideas that you had for the event? Uh, I think what I would like to share is we had a really good conversation and uh, someone in the group challenged us <laughs> that we <Sure>. that, <laughs> that, that we pursue this inclusion of the community. And hence, this idea came up to invite people who participated in the, in the grant program and uh, in, in the past. Uh, and I think that's really, it's again a good push of, of mobilizing people and not just like creating activity and, and, and create the energy that, that the more activity is happening. Uh, obviously, in the new setup, that doesn't work. Uh, I, but for me, the takeaway is, again, it's good to think in this situation when we talk about the things that we go back and say, we want activity in the community. How can we make this happen, even if it's more work? That was <laughs> my pushback. It was like, make it simple. We show one thing, and it's done. And you know what I mean? But this is really where the more people participate, the better it is for the organization. And uh, I think that was something good. But uh, obviously, with the, with the academy and the, the parts of cinema, there's a lot of people involved as well, which, uh, yeah, we didn't think about it, but it's a good thing. And in a certain way, we we, we comply with one. Two birds with one stone. Oh, that's the one. <laughs> so, is it two birds with one slap? Two birds with one slap. Two birds with one slap. Okay. Anyway, uh, but then I, yeah, we have this and this. like, yeah, I think that's the summary out of our conversation. Well, I think the original flow, like, uh, well, we brought up was that, and it was about who was the member of the line, and that's the goal is to try to get more, to get mem the members of NAM to come back and, you know, like, sort of, um, you know, participate and re reintroduce themselves, you know, just that like of the fair. You know, I really fought for, like, um, the elephant and the glitter bombs, but they wouldn't give it to them. So. <laughs> <laughs> could, we, could we do, like, it sort of brings up the point still stands though, but about activating membership, right? Mm -hmm. And so we used to do member nights. Um, that could be something actually the board is creating and putting this together as well in the past, like quarterly member nights or or twice a year member nights. We would often have them at the parlor room and, and do some programming around that. We could still do that separate from the end. It's uh, Activating membership is, is obviously important. I think we should put it on the new board member because they have four new board members. <laughs> inauguration <laughs> time. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, like, it does it, but this would be great to have those things again. I mean, again, it's a recent question. Um, uh, so we need to uh, have. An email for on this. If we're going to be thinking about ideas for the other meeting. No, the other meeting, I, I we still no, have the committee. We still have the committee like this. I, I do believe the three of us are focusing okay. on the on the handy, but it's okay. less organizing okay. because it's going to get with the crossroads cinema, so we just have to decide on the on the actual timing and so on. But. We even okay. have, have a board meeting beforehand, so it should not be a problem to. Okay. Cool. So, sort of, wait, is Melissa showing her movie in there? No. It's no. The, the parts of cinema. It's the, it's the, the summer pro, uh, uh, project where everyone. Right, right. I know what that is, but what is Melissa showing her in there? She's not showing any stuff now. Like, there was no specific part in there. Oh, her. I see. Uh, she was just like, she would have to be fed from some of the work. Oh, right. Yeah. But it's so no, there was nothing to do with that. Okay. So that's not our answer. Yeah. Hmm. The crowd uh, trusts. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Uh, well, so the point about how we're going to have another board meeting before we have the annual does give a little more time to plan. That's certainly true. So any any more stuff you folks want to bring up then, that would be fine. Um, the stuff about member nights, I think sort of coupled with a lot of the stuff that Tim has been talking about with just different ways to get people more engaged, I think is something we should definitely look into doing like uh, like early next year. Right, because I definitely want to do that, but it is kind of I don't know how unless you have a plan for it, I don't know how we shift uh or alter crowdsourced in such a way to do that. But if you have a way to do that, I will totally accept it. Um, but but yeah, no, I like the um uh I like the idea. I like a lot of the stuff Tim's saying. I like um Al's suggestion of the member nights thing. So so yeah. But uh, that, yeah, I think that's that's my main stuff. What's has 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 how are people feeling? I wish you can say anything. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I move a motion to adjourn. What's the day? Second. Oh, <laughs> all those in favor of taking my hint and adjourning, uh, say aye <laughs> or raise your hand. Wow. Uh, thanks everybody. That was a little bit longer meeting, although we got started a smidge late, but we covered a lot of ground. Uh, so thank you. And I will see you in November. See, ya. see you all. Have a good night, everyone. Take care.